Welcome back to our series of 200 super hard PMP practice questions. I'm Andrew Ramdial. I'm the author of the world's best-selling study guide, PMP Exam Prep Simplified, and creator of the best-selling Udemy course. I've helped over 500,000 people pass their PMP exam. Yes, over a half a million students. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with these questions. Now, these 10 questions are going to be more definition-based. They're going to test your um, mindset, but they're also going to test if you remember a few definitions. And I want you guys to remember something. This exam is not just about memorizing the mindset or understanding the mindset. It's also about knowing your terms and knowing your processes. And these 10 questions will do that. Let's get into it. All right, let's go. Question 61. During a complex software development project, the project manager notices a significant significant variances between the plan and actual performance metrics. The key deliverables are at risk of being delayed due to these discrepancies. What should the project manager do first to ensure the project's objectives are being met? A, adjust the timeline and communicate the changes to all stakeholders. Conduct a detailed analysis of the performance data to identify root causes. Request additional resources to accelerate project work and meet scheduled targets. Reassess the project management strategies to better align with current challenges. Okay, now I want you guys to notice in this question that you have some kind of a problem. And if you notice, the problem is what? You notice that there's variances between the plan and the actual work that's going on. So when you have a problem on a project, what should you do first? I mean, that's what the question here is. Ask it. And I want you guys to remember something. Don't take actions first. Assess, review, evaluate, analyze, and that brings the answer to B. Yes, because when there's a problem on a project, the first thing the project manager does is not to just adjust the schedule without understanding what that problem is. It is not to hire additional resources if they don't know what that problem is. Notice they're looking at the risk management strategies. It's already happened. It's not really a risk yet. Uh, the best thing here to do is to add, do a detailed analysis of the actual data. And, and notice this is the risk management strategies, not the risk strategies, not the risk responses if you're thinking that. These are the management strategies, how you plan to manage risk. It's definitely not that one. B is the best answer. Follow the mindset on this one. Question 62. In a large infrastructure project, the project manager is faced with the challenge of sudden regulatory changes that could potentially impact the scope and cost. The project is currently on track, but these changes might require adjustment in project execution. What should you do first? So once again, you have that first thing. Update the budget and timeline. Okay. Initiate a stakeholder meeting to discuss the impacts and adjustments. Conduct a comprehensive review. Implement the regulatory changes. This question is very similar to what we had before. Now you notice it says here, sudden regulatory changes, and it says could potentially impact. So this is, it may impact the project or it may not. Best answer here is just like in the first question we just did, is gonna be to analyze this review analyze this change. How is it going to affect the project? In what areas of the project? How much is it going to add or even remove from the scope? How much is it going to add or remove from the budget? And if the scope and budget is being affected, maybe so is the schedule. So you just don't want to just go and update it without preliminary assessment. Get a good assessment. You should never just go update your project with just a preliminary assessment. You don't want to meet, before you meet with the stakeholders, you need to analyze this regulation yourself. Imp never implement like this. D was the trod answer. If you select a D, you got to do some study and you got to review the mindset section in the course. Anytime you see a question that says, first, what should you do first? It's probably not to fix the problem. It's probably not to implement what somebody's asking for. It's more than likely to analyze what they're asking for. 63. A project manager is overseeing the construction of a new office building. The project is running over budget due to high cost of materials. The project team suggests several options to cut costs, including using less materials that may slightly reduce durability. Simplifying 
the building design or eliminate some non-essential features. Which approach should the project manager use to address costs while ensuring the building meets its intended purpose? Now, this is a definition question. You're not really going to get the mindset here, but you got to understand the definition. Is it earned value? Uh, is it a value engineering? Is it a critical path? Is it earned value? Or is it Monte Carlo? Best answer here is going to be value engineering. What is value engineering? Value engineering is something we do all the time. Value engineering is if I tell you guys that I want you guys to go out and buy a new car and you're like, okay, I'll, I'll buy that new car. Well, what you're going to do is if I tell you what type of car you should get, get a Toyota Camry that's a white one that's a 2024. You know the scope. Your objective is to get that thing as cheap as possible. That's value engineering. Value engineering is about how can we deliver what the customer wants in the cheapest or the most cost-effective way, which is basically what this is describing. Critical path method, this is just formulas. That's not what they're asking. This is uh, tracking the statistics of how much money you're spending versus how much you should have spent. This is earn value. I'm sorry, critical path method is actually your schedule. See, I missed... I looked at critical path method and, and said earn value. So earn value is all the formulas you're going to be using in order to track your budget and see how far how far you're on or off your budget. Critical path method allows you to build an entire schedule that tells you your critical path on a schedule. And the Monte Carlo is about different simulations. The Monte Carlo simulations is trying hundreds or thousands of different simulations to come up with a budget schedule or even determine risks. All right, A is the best answer. Now, I do have a few more questions on value engineer. I just put that in there. They're going to be used mostly as a term. Here we go. Question 64. During a project charter review session, a dispute arises between the sponsor and the product owner, witnessed by the team and other sp uh, stakeholders. In this situation, what should the project manager do to manage the conflict and continue the project? Propose a follow-up session to address unresolved issues after the meeting. Okay. Facilitate the meeting actively using conflict resolution strategies to manage the dispute and maintain team cohesion. Adjourn the meeting immediately. Suggest a cooling off period. Arrange a separate conflict resolution session with a neutral facilitator to assist parties. Now, your exam wants you to take a direct approach, wants you to fix that problem right away. So what are you going to do? Right? You want to take a confronting approach. So the best one here that's a confronting approach is going to be B. That's right. You want to facilitate this meeting actively. You're going to have, in every meeting, you're going to have conflict. It's just the nature of the game. It's how humans work. So what you got to do is you got to take an active approach Conflict is not bad. Conflict is a good thing. Always remember that. I told you that a hundred times in the course. Conflict is good. Managed conflict is good. Unmanaged conflict that can lead to a world war where people may physically hurt each other, it's probably not a good idea. Never let it get there. So B, best answer. Question 65. A project manager is tasked with organizing risk for a new infrastructure project. To ensure comprehensive risk management, the project manager decides to use a risk breakdown structure. However, the team is considered, the RBS, may become overly complex and difficult to manage. What should the project manager do to create an effective and manageable RBS? Develop a simple categorization scheme that only includes high priority risks. Okay. Use an existing RBS from a similar project and adapt it to the current project needs. All right. Create a detailed RBS with multiple subcategories to capture all potential risks. All right. Involve key stakeholders in the development of the RBS to ensure it's comprehensive and manageable. This is a good question, and it's a tough question. So first of all, you have to remember what an RBS is. An RBS is done to do what? An RBS actually doesn't have risk in it. That's in the risk register. What does the RBS do? The RBS is there to categorize risks. Okay? Now... You notice, A, if you said A, develop a simple categorization scheme, that's fine, and only includes high prior. It doesn't really have risk in it. It's a way to categorize the risk. You're going to use those categories in your risk register. Uh, and only includes high-level risk, high, high priority risk. No, it's not only for that. 
Use an existing RBS template to adapt it to the current. I like this idea, but every project is unique. It's best to get people involved. The more people involved in telling you to risk for your project, the more likely you're going to be successful at it. A detail with multiple subcategories to capture all potential risk. Although this may be a good one, the best thing here is to get more people involved on your project. Remember, the more people involved, the more key stakeholders. This could be team members, for, for example, subject matter experts or whoever. They'll tell you better of how to develop that particular thing. Question 66. In a construction project, the project manager decides to implement value in value engineering to enhance the project's value. The goal is to improve the radio, the ratio of function to cost by analyzing and proposing cost effective solutions. What should the project manager do first? Have the team conduct a brainstorming session to remove functions for cost reduction. All right. Focus solely on reducing costs, even if it means compromising a functionality. Engage with stakeholders to understand the critical functions. Implement all proposed changes immediately to maximize costs. Now, this one here, it does say value engineering, but it's really a mindset question. You notice, once again, it's this first. Like, what are we going to do first? Value engineering is about how we make things cheaper. It's how we make things more cost effective while delivering the same amount of functions. So one of the things we never want to do is to remove functions just to reduce costs. It's about keeping the functions the same. So I'm going to eliminate this right off the bat. That should have been one of the two odd answers. And implement all proposed changes. Uh, we're going to get rid of that because you just don't implement all the changes. Uh, that's not, probably not going to maximize function. The best answer here, by the way, is going to be C. Engage with the stakeholders. You want to understand what the functions are. Notice. Before you start to optimize the project, before you start to maybe reduce some functions, maybe find alternative to those functions, something a little cheaper that gives them the same function, understand what the functions are. Never compromise on functionality. Best answer there, guys, was C. 67. A project manager is conducting a value engineering workshop to identify ways to improve a project's value. During the session, a team member suggests replacing a component with a cheaper alternative that slightly reduces performance but saves a significant amount of money. What should the project manager do to determine if the solution aligns with value engineering? Approve the change as it reduces overall project value, uh, project cost. Reject the change as it reduces performance. Evaluate the reduction and reduction in performance impacts the project functionality. Implement the change if it does not require additional stakeholder approval. Same thing here. Use the mindset. Somebody's asking you for a change. What are you going to be doing? The best thing here, guys, is, of course, to evaluate that change. Never approve, reject, or implement the change just without evaluating the change. That's part of being a project manager. 68. A project manager is working on a large infrastructure project that is facing scheduled delays. The project manager wants to use advanced forecasting technique to predict the future status and progress of the project. The project team has been using EVM to track progress. What should the project manager do to forecast the project completion date accurately? So this one here is, you notice they're using EVM. And they want, they, they want to use advanced technique. Now, this, of course, is going to be with EVM. So what are you going to do? Well, apply the SPI to the remaining work and calculate an EAC. Okay. Conduct a Monte Carlo simulation to account for potential variations in the schedule. All right. Use CPM to reevaluate the timeline. Implement rolling wave planning to adjust future work plans. Best answer here, guys, is going to be... Now, this, by the way, is really definition. If you really understood what EVM means, earned value management, then you know some of the formulas, including the SPI, the Schedule Performance Index. You can actually take and use the Schedule Performance Index with the EAC to, to forecast a schedule, making this the best answer. Monte Carlo simulations looks at things, multiple simulations that can affect the schedule. Helps to build the schedule more than predict the schedule. This is to build the timeline. Your critical path method helps you to develop a schedule, not necessarily to predict it. Roll-on-wave planning is just planning to replan here. This is not 
related really to it doesn't really have much to do with EVM because this is planning and EVM is an executor. 69. A software development project is midway through its timeline and the project manager notices that the actual progress is lacking behind the schedule, the planned schedule. The sponsor is concerned about meeting the upcoming milestone. What technique should the project manager use to address the sponsor's concern about uh, sponsor's concern and predict the project completion date? Create a trend analysis using historical performance data. Okay. Apply EVM to calculate the time variance. Use a three-point estimation to forecast future tasks. Perform a resource level analysis to optimize resource allocation. This one is really a definition question also. Notice, notice is the project is lacking behind the schedule. You're concerned about meeting it. What technique, basically, you're going to use and predict the project's completion date. Which one, help, which one is going to help us do that? The best answer is going to be EVM. Correct. It's similar to this question that we had here. EVM, the EAC in particular, the estimate at completion is a formula that can predict budget and it can also predict schedule. Trend analysis using historical information. While this is good, EVM will be more accurate because it's not just based on historical, it's based on what's happening right now. Uh, Three-point estimation is, tells you the duration of something. It doesn't really predict anything. Resource leveling, I'm not sure how that predicts anything. Resource leveling ensures no one really works overtime. Question 70. A construction project is experiencing significant delays due to many unforeseen weather conditions, causing concerns about meeting the final deadline. The project manager needs to predict the potential impact on the project completion dates and communicate this. What approach should you take? Update the Gantt chart with the new weather delay information and manually adjust the timeline. All right. Use a Monte Carlo analysis simulation to predict the probability of various completion dates. All right. Apply CPM analysis to identify which activities can be fast tracked. Okay. Perform a cost benefit analysis to decide whether to hire additional resources to mitigate the delays. Now, the best answer here is going to be a Monte Carlo simulation. Now, I want to point out something. Get notice many unforeseen conditions. This means many simulations. If you're looking for something that goes through many, many different simulations or quote unquote scenarios, that's the definition of a Monte Carlo. Again, chart is just used to make the actual schedule. CPM is used to make the, uh, the, the, the schedule. It's not going to be used to, to predict or to, give you the results of multiple scenarios or simulations. Cost benefit analysis, not yet. This is still, this here is right now, they have to figure out how they're gonna manage that weather conditions, then they can determine if they wanna hire more resources. So if you're doing this, the best answer is the Monte Carlo simulation. All right, that concluded this section. I know these questions were tough. These questions were hard. Some of them had definitions in them. You really have to learn some of those definitions. Remember, guys, your exam is not just all about the mindset. It's also about knowing your definitions. If you want to learn more, check out my course on all these. I cover all these different things in the course. Now, I want to point out to you guys, if you want more questions like this, check the link below to get the simulator. It has much more questions like this. It's close to a 1,000 practice questions in there, if not more. So go check out, you're gonna get more of this and you're gonna get 400 of them with video explanations. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.